Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Wag Me TV. The boys are back this week, and we're coming to you to cover the most important news in crypto this week, which is not the Federal Reserve meeting, but instead the Arbitrum airdrop. Now, this airdrop is, you know, it's something that has been talked about and, uh, you know, rumored about for months, if not years now. And nobody really knew if it was coming. No one knew if it was just a rumor. And last week on Thursday, we actually got confirmation from the Arbitrum Foundation themselves that, in fact, the Arbitrum token, ARB, ARB, was going to be coming out on March 23rd. So that's this Thursday. Now, this is a massive event in crypto. There's going to be... Basically, there was a bunch of criteria that needed to be met. So if you used the chain, if you, depending on how much you use the chain, if you use the bridge, if you used Arbitrum 1 and Arbitrum Nova, depending on which chains you used and what protocols you used, you were entitled to a certain amount of airdrop. And that airdrop is going to be claimable starting on Thursday, which is the 23rd. Now, there's a lot of speculation about what this actually means for Arbitrum and crypto as a whole. And we're here to kind of run that all down. So without further ado, uh, let's jump into it. Um, so basically what we have here is a situation where about, you know, people are saying about $500 million potentially of airdrop is essentially going to be gifted to people. Let's start by talking about what does that actually mean and, and what can that mean for Arbitrum as a whole? What do you guys think? Well, I, I think really quick there, I mean, that was a great rundown. And so, you know, the ner the news we've heard about the Arbitrum airdrop was that uh, the snapshot was taken on February 3rd. So unfortunately, anybody watching right now, you can't get into this airdrop if you hadn't done some activity on Arbitrum before that date, um, which is unfortunate. But yeah, like you're saying, there is a ton of liquidity flooding into Arbitrum that really could get spread across many of the applications that live on that layer two. And so you could see yields go up in different decentralized exchanges or lending protocols. And, you know, it's really an exciting time. I think when you, you look at the optimism token, which is a, another layer two, you see a significant um, market cap with that. And, and one where, you know, you're able to kind of fund a lot of, like I was saying, lending protocols in on that layer two. So super exciting. And yeah, Mata, I'd be interested to to hear your take on the the airdrop. No, I think it's it's super exciting. And to that point, kind of playing devil's advocate, right? You can also think of it that's just big injection of liquidity, right? So the question then being, do people then cash out once they get this back, right? Is it a you know buy the rumor, sell the news sort of event, right? Because there is going to be potentially a lot of sell pressure on the ARB token because a lot of supply is being injected into the ecosystem. But like you all are saying, basically you're probably going to go one way or the other. You're either going to pump, <clears throat> or there's going to be some sort of a dump on the ARB token. But if you're pumping within Arbitrum and you're spreading that out through the ecosystem, you're going to be spreading that out to tons of different projects. Which is why we wanted to come to you all today with a couple um, different <clears throat> options and things that we're looking at when it comes to some of the pieces on that layer too. Absolutely. And so what, what did you just have pulled up there? Was that the optimism chart? Yeah, let me go ahead and show the optimism chart here. You know, what we saw, like you're saying, Mata, to your point, you know, it, we saw a ton of sell pressure. So, you know, probably coming in around $3. We initially saw a price of about $1.50, um, you know, a day and a half, two days after the initial airdrop. And then it started to settle more around 50 cents here. And so... Yeah, I, I think it's something where you could see a lot of sell pressure in the Arbitrum airdrop as well. But, you know, it is it is the native token to a layer two, a, a very, you know, popular layer two. And so, as you might imagine, like, you know, this price continued to grow. So it's it's something that maybe after that initial dip, you could start to see um, it being a, a token that, you know, you want to add to your po portfolio if you're bullish on, on layer two, on Ethereum layer twos. Um, but yeah, just yeah. wanted to show this chart. And with Arbitrum, right, obviously Arbitrum optimism, similar in a lot of ways, but I think some of the things that make Arbitrum specifically special is they have a fairly massive community behind it. 
And it's one of the most vibrant and innovative communities, probably in DeFi, at least for the, in, in a long time, right? And so we know innovation happens at massive scales when there are developers wanting to create better products. So if you have developers coming in, you have a massive community behind it, there's a lot of hype about this airdrop that could allow that liquidity to spread out to you know, various projects and things like that. So just because something happened specifically with Optimism, very similar um, in the ways that they operate, a lot of differences as well, it doesn't mean it's going to happen the exact same way with Arbitrum. So we all, uh, obviously, with not, not, not financial advice in this, but <clears throat> we wanted to give a couple different options when it comes to that. But you're probably looking at two different scenarios that could play out with the, with the airdrop, but both very exciting, whether that's a down move or an up move. And I'd be interested to see how Arbitrum's circulating supply works. You know, when you look at this Optimism circulating supply, you're only seeing seven percent of the token. So um, I bet that's a, a you know a, a video we could probably do next week around just the to tokenomics and the supply of the Arbitrum, Arbitrum token once it's out. I'd love to, and then yeah. maybe even compare across that with Optimism as well. I think yeah. it'd be an awesome one to do. Yeah, I think all all super good points. I mean, from my view, I I almost think it's it's a given that out of the gate it's going to dump. Like, I don't think you can give hundreds or thousands of people a bunch of free money without at least some percentage of them um, cashing out immediately. So I would look for a, for a drop right off the bat. The question is, where are we at a month, two months, three months from now? And you know, how many buyers are coming in to to buy that dip? It's important to note, you know. Optimism has about only half the TVL as as uh, you know Arbitrum. Arbitrum has double the TVL. It even has double the TVL as like a Polygon or something. Polygon's trading at like eight billion market cap, right? So as Mata was saying, it can really go one of two ways. And I think personally, it's going to be down at first and then back up as people start buying the dip. And um, I think to Armada's point too, I think the the airdrop itself is actually going to act as a stimulus event for a lot of the projects on Arbitrum. And so that's why this next part of the video, we really want to focus on a few of the part, uh, projects that we think are going to benefit from this massive kind of cash injection, liquidity injection into the Arbitrum ecosystem. So Ev, if you want to pull up the, uh, the DeFi Llama chart here, we can go through a few of our personal favorites, tokens that we think are going to, are going to benefit from, from this in the, kind of weeks and months ahead. Yeah, and, and just to your point, we are seeing, you know, a $1.8 billion in TVL on Arbitrum here. And like you were saying, you know, almost twice what we see on Optimism. This is Optimism at around, you know, just under a million TVL and, you know, some really some significant projects there. But yeah, let's roll through, you know, top 10, top 15 of what we see on Arbitrum. So you want to take it away? Yeah, I think, you know, the first token that you're going to want to look at is is kind of what Arbitrum has become known for, which is GMX, right? That's the staple of Arbitrum, uh, you know, kind of the leader in perpetuals exchanges right now. A lot of GMX forks now coming out, basically trying to copy what they've done and improve upon it. But they are really the first movers in this decentralized perpetuals exchange. I've used their product before. Very smooth, very seamless. Obviously, the fees on Arbitrum are super cheap, um, and I think I think a lot of people are going to be moving into into GMX, and and their TVL should rise. The other thing to look out for is: are they going to have a, a perpetual exchange for the Arbitrum token itself? You could envision a scenario with all the all the uh, you know volatility with the Arb token coming out at the gate. If they actually have an option to trade, uh, you know, it, to trade Arbitrum on their exchange, that would be really exciting for a lot of traders, I'd assume, and probably increase the the volume a lot. So, did you guys have anything else to add on on GMX? Well, I think also what's <clears throat> what's really interesting on GMX is that it was deployed on on Avalanche as well, right? So <clears throat> they're kind of spreading across a, a couple of different chains, and they're picking some some really really key winners, right, between Arbitrum and Avalanche. So just something to, to also keep in mind while you're looking at a, a project like that is who are they working with and how well are they working, right? They have had a massive market cap increase throughout 
all of 2022 and then of course this year as well as we've seen so super exciting project kind of like the epitome of what made arbitrum arbitrum today so i i definitely see with an airdrop coming with money being injected into this ecosystem a lot of it will likely go there in one way or another yeah and i mean with free money why not leverage it as much as you can i think with gmx you can get up to 50x leverage on you know some of the different uh tokens or trades that you want so you know i could definitely see that becoming a popular area it's a park NFA, not yeah, financial, not advice. financial <laughs> advice but yeah um so yeah that's gmx and then you know as we see we've got uni swap sushi swap at two and three but you know Zoe, do you want to talk about camelot here at four yeah, absolutely. So Camelot has kind of established itself as the kind of premier decentralized exchange specific to Arbitrum, right? They've really branded themselves on Arbitrum only. The other ones, obviously Uniswap, SushiSwap, totally cross-chain. The Camelot team has really dug deep, and I feel like their business development efforts have really been focused on helping projects in the Arbitrum ecosystem raise money. And so that's why they've really established themselves as um, you know the leader in terms of the uh, uh, Arbitrum DEXs. So that one, if you look at the chart for, for Camelot, it's actually absolutely insane. Like it's had such an insane run up. Look at those I, percentages. 70, I think it's yeah. over last week. Yeah. I mean, that that's on the TVL side, but even their price chart is just, just totally bonkers. Wow. Um, look at that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's had a really, really crazy run up pretty much trading at all time highs at, at the moment. And, you know, the thing is, in the scheme of DeFi, it's really only, it's still kind of a mid cap at best, right? And so still a lot of room to run here potentially. So another one to keep an eye on. Um, if we want to hop back over to the the chart, let's keep going down here. Um, you know, Vela Exchange is another uh, one to keep an eye on. It's it's kind of, you know, they're going to try to be competitors with, with GMX. They're another perpetuals exchange. Um, aiming to be more user-friendly, more kind of what you would experience on like a centralized type exchange, right? They're, they're really trying to replicate that experience. Um, and so, Zoe, when you look at ZyberSwap, because I know that's one that, you know, we've talked about mm -hmm. um, off camera, but when you look at the TVL of, you know, minus 70%, what, what is some of the news around ZyberSwap or is this like a pretty recent one that's been hopping up yeah. and down the charts here? Yeah, so ZyberSwap is, a, I believe it's a fork of Uniswap. And so it gotcha. was, it had some of the most epic yields, like yield opportunities for a while there. And so what you had was like a lot of these exchanges, you had incredible yield farming and incredible TVL growth for, you know, maybe the first month or two. And then you had just kind of like a hyperinflation problem where like your incentivizing your pools with so much of your native token that all of a sudden, like at some point people start selling the token. Right. right. Um, and then capital starts leaving the, the ecosystem. Cyberswap, I think still has like a really solid team and like, clearly they have a very su uh, successful product. And I think, you know, they're definitely one. If you look at their chart right now, they're, they're pretty beat down. And so if you're looking for kind of a value play um, and one that was probably more of a low cap, um, definitely more high risk, but, uh, you know, could definitely run. Um, I would definitely, you know, take a look at ZyberSwap. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, we start getting more into like the little bit more degen type, uh, type plays here, you know, as, as you kind of creep down the TVL rankings, you start getting into some, some pretty high risk plays. So I would say, you know, be aware Actually, what, one other solid one, you know, Radiant is down there at number 23, borrowing and lending market. Um, Armada, you want to give a quick, quick rundown on, on what Radiant is? Yeah. Um, so Radiant <clears throat> is really a, an omni-channel or omni-chain money market that allows users to deposit and borrow major assets across chains, right? So it's <clears throat> built on top of a layer zero for cross-chain interoperability. It leverages Stargate stable router, which is interesting. But one thing that I found very interesting as well with this, similar to what my commentary on, on GMX is that um, they do have an upcoming 
release, their V2 release or version two, that's supposed to simplify the cross-chain fee sharing and expedite the process of launching on new chains. And so after that, it's actually supposed to launch on BNB chain. So <clears throat> again, like you're starting to work with more and more players, you're starting to become more and more reputable. Your name is getting more and more out there. Um, but yeah, Radiant Capital is a really interesting one. We were just looking at it right before we hopped on here and they had some pretty crazy APYs on that. So, you know, sometimes that can be a little bit sketchy, but again, to Soham's point, maybe you're getting into more of the D-Gen zone where, you know, if you play it right, you could come out winning, but if you play it wrong, you could get rugged real quick. So just yeah. be careful. That one has some good news around it. It seems to be getting a lot of hype. So um, something that I definitely looked into and, and caught my my interest a little bit. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't really think that, that there's much of a, you know, rug risk. I mean, there's always some amount of rug risk with everything, but I don't really think Radiant has, as uh, you know, they're, they're a pretty established team, established project. And so yeah, this we, isn't financial advice. So, you know. Yeah. Take that with a grain of salt, but yeah, continue. There's risk in really risk in everything you do, so it's up yep. to you to kind of gauge it yourself. Obviously, um, what I will say is, you take a look at the APRs here, and you see, you know, obviously it stands out, and I think that's going to be true for a lot of projects once the airdrop happens, because everyone's going to be trying to lure that capital and create ARB pools on their uh, protocols, right? And the way you do that is through these incentives, and so. I would expect a huge uptick in rewards and project rewards, at least for the first maybe month or so, right off the right off the airdrop, maybe a couple weeks or something like that, just as protocols try to kind of lure as much TVL to their chain as possible or to their protocol as possible. Yeah, that's super interesting. And you know, so we, do you know anything about this loop APR, this very degen play that we're seeing? you know, upwards of 150% APR on USDC. Yeah, so I haven't used that myself, but generally the concept in DeFi when it comes to looping is where you deposit and then you basically borrow against your deposit and then redeposit into the same pool. So you're basically able to, let's say you deposit USDT at like an 85% collateral ratio. So you borrow 85 USDT and then loop it back, loop it back, loop it back, loop it back, loop and then again, and you keep kind of kind of borrowing and looping against your own thing. So you're 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 obviously your risk if like there's a huge price deviation or something like that, um, you know your risk goes up. But at the same time, on a stable coin, in theory, you can get some like really really juicy yields um, through the through the looping strategy. Yeah. Yeah, that's super interesting. It was kind of first, uh, I think it was first popularized by Mim and Abracadabra um, when they used it with the the Terra Luna 20% anchor strategy. That was the the good old days. <laughs> the good old days before Peak it all bull went. market. Yeah. yeah. Peak <laughs> bull market. Yeah. Um, the last one that we want to draw your attention to and one that I just recently found is, uh, it's I think, your scroll up, Ev, I think it's sitting there at number 14 number now. Change. It yep. literally just came out like this week, Arbitrum Exchange, completely community-owned exchange where all the swap fees, 100% of them, are distributed back to stakers on uh, stakers of the, the token itself. Um, seems like a pretty solid team. Obviously, this is, this is definitely the most degen of all the plays, um, so be very careful. But so far, in terms of what I'm seeing... Um, you know, they've experienced tremendous growth, as you can see. They went from pretty much zero TVL a couple of days ago to, you know, about 40 million almost in mm -hmm. in TVL. Um, very attractive yields, really interesting uh, farms to play with over there. Um, and, you know, definitely a low cap kind of potential low cap, like high risk, high reward play when it comes to Arbitrum. So... Go check yeah, it out. I think something that was interesting about that was that you were able to receive your yields in, you know, a kind a, a small amount of like select tokens that you could decide. Is that right, Zoe? Correct, correct. So a lot of times uh, on these on these protocols, you're earning the native token as the yield. Here, you can decide to to either earn the native token if you're liquidity providing, or if you go use their single sided vaults. You can get a you can earn your yield in wrapped Bitcoin 
wrapped Ethereum or a USDC. So a bit more customizability there and uh, you know, a nice, a nice tweak when it comes to the actual tokenomics of the protocol as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's super interesting. Yeah. You know, I think there, we could see a lot of action in this space and, you know, obviously it's, it's going to be something to watch for the next week coming up here. Um, guys, you guys, any, you guys got any further thoughts around, you know, how the Arbitrum ecosystem could, you know, be changed or heightened by the, the Arbitrum airdrop? Not really. I mean, I think at least from my end, I feel like we covered it pretty well. Um, I'm really, really excited to see what happens. I think it's going to be, you know, we haven't had an event, uh, such a, such a highly anticipated event in crypto like this for a very long time. Usually it's been like things totally catching us by surprise and like black swan events that we just have to kind of deal with. And they're, <laughs> they've most recently been pretty negative. And so this is just like a really fun kind of, uh, kind of time. Cause we have like a nice kind of positive catalyst to look forward to. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Yeah, it's fun with uh, <clears throat> the last, I think the last really good news or really like, you know, positive thing we heard was the, probably the ETH upgrade, right? It changed to proof of stake. Mm -hmm. So it'll be, it'll be fun and cool to have something new. And I mean, Bitcoin's been running like crazy and crypto seems to be getting a little bit more hot, if you will. So kind of coming out a pretty good time for Arbitrum. Um, all things considered. So it should be interesting to see how this one plays out. Absolutely. And I, I think the the one other thing too, is that, you know, it's, it's rare to have a project, not even project a chain this successful, you know, have an airdrop at this time. This is a moment where they have, you know, market share of the L2 space. So, you know, it's not only just some, you know, small chain coming up, it's the leader that's actually doing this. So definitely a big event in the space. Absolutely. Well, to the viewers, let us know your thoughts in the, the comments below. If you, uh, you know, enjoyed hearing us talk about this, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, we'll be back soon enough to keep track of everything, the latest and greatest in crypto. Much love from the boys. Wag me. <laughs>